We have about 18 people registered this morning, and we have uh, so far almost 10 of those 18 here. Good morning to all of you. Over on the right hand side is the question box. If you want to communicate with me in any way during the session, uh, just type your question there. I will pay attention to it. And uh, let's let's begin. Um, so I'm Jack Chapman. Uh, I love doing this uh, this webinar. I am, I learned from Lynn Joseph, who's the author of a book called. Uh, we'll get this title later. Um, I learned from her the power of this uh, technique. And it's a really simple technique, and let, we use it all the time during our daily lives. But we're not really sometimes aware that we're using it. This is me, and this is a book I wrote in 1984. So it's years and years old, but it's become the, the, uh, the Bible of salary negotiations. If you don't have it, I'm going to. Uh, I'll make sure you get a copy. It's my favorite thing to, to not give away, but discounts so much that uh, you'd be, be unconscionable for you not to pick it up. Uh, that's me. That's what people, most people know me for. Uh, but today's presentation is not going to be about salary. It's going to be about the Job Hunter's Magic Bullet. And before we dive into that, let's just take a look at some of the other things that we have online here. There we go. Okay, so um, I'm launching a poll now. The poll is a way that we can interact a little bit more during this uh, during this webinar. And uh, I want you to jot down the places where you find you could use some help, or it's not going as well as you would like. Um, Resume not getting enough response or not clear enough. Are you not getting enough people connections from you spend a lot of time on the computer and spin your computer wheels and go no place. Is anyone experiencing the need to be more organized? Too much to do, not enough time to do it. And if you're not sure you're being found on LinkedIn, salary could be screening you out of otherwise good interviews. Those uh those five pieces of the job search are very commonly obstacles and challenge points for a lot of people. So uh, we only have 70% who have voted so far, but let's let's do this. So it looks like looks like more than half of you want half or more of you uh, experienced three of these, and, uh, and LinkedIn is at the highest of 38%. Be sure to whoever voted for that, be sure you go to the LinkedIn. A webinar that's coming up. So those are the results that, and uh, because of those results, we offer four workshops every month. Now there's other workshops I'll tell you about, but there's four that are every month, and these four are designed to cure those problems of resume not getting enough response and enough people connections, etc. There's one about the resume and marketing tools, sometimes called don't send it, don't send that resume. We're still working on its name. But it can use handbills, cover letters, other marketing tools to double the effect of the, your uh, of your job search marketing materials. Then, how many of you spend a lot of time on the internet? <laughs> Excuse me. I, I inhale a little water there. Sorry. The internet could be a boom bonanza of all kinds of jobs, but it turns out it's just making more and more and more work for us. You want to do job search 6.0, how to use the internet to really find a job. There's six different levels of that. And um, you want to learn the LinkedIn basics and LinkedIn master. We do those once a month. Time management, we do that once a month. Salary negotiations, we do that once a month. And uh, your, uh, yours truly here got a few other things up. So special trainings at different times we have, uh, conquering email time vampire. Home-based franchises and business money, productivity combined with tranquility. That's uh, all these different workshops, and uh, 
they're all available to you. And you may think, well, gosh, that's too many. I can't keep track of them. How do you do that? Well, if you haven't yet, you will soon be on our newsletter mailing list, and the newsletter will always tell you uh, what's going on. So um, we also offer a special service to people who feel stuck, stalled, or confused in their career or just don't know how to get it started. Uh, an intensive in-person teleconference meeting figures out what's right, what's wrong, and what you need to change. We call that a CAP session. Uh, we'll be calling you to get some feedback on the webinar anyway, and if they want to discuss CAP sessions, we can do that. All right, John Benner's Magic Bullet it is now two or three minutes after the hour. Let's just make sure, go to the question box here, make sure that no questions pending, okay? Let's dive in. Uh, how many people do we have? We have 12 people out of 19 that enrolled. That's pretty great. So what are we doing here? What are we doing with this magic bullet? Why do I call it magic bullets? And, and, and can it really do all these things? There's accelerated job search five times faster for 80% of job hunters. That's a big claim. Works at all letter, letters levels from senior executive to mailroom clerk. Works for every industry, function, title, from anesthesiologist to zoologist. Works as well or better in a tough economic climate. Results show up right away almost. Adaptable to a focused campaign or an unfocused career change. You can learn how to do it in one hour. So you'll learn it right here today in the workshop. And yet you'll be using it over and over again throughout your career. So here's the actual study that prompted me to put this workshop together. <clears throat> the study had a manufacturing plant that was closed, and uh, so everybody kind of started out the same same place, same same date, same employer, same ex-employer, etc. And they were put into two groups. One group is the control group that just does things normally. And then there's the program group. They use this little technique, and the difference between the two at the end of two months is huge. At the end of two months. Only, what is that, how many of the, of the control group? Looks like about just a little under 20, maybe 19, 20% 20 of the, of the control group have, re re, have been reemployed. Where you get almost 60% of the people in the experimental group that use that technique. And it wasn't just for the first two months. Look at the end of four months. In four months, almost 80% of the people in the program got a job, whereas the control were only down well under 50%. So I'm going to start by saying, what is it? And uh, I'm going to have that be interactive. On the right-hand side, you have a control panel. The control panel is a place for questions. We're type in the questions. What do you think it is? What's your best guess? What's your thoughts? Of what, take, what could this technique be? When I see them appear up here, I'll tell you if you're right or wrong and what the next steps are. Waiting for people in the question box to take to me. What do you think it is? All right. So Ross says, could it be being active, getting out there? Ross, something you're getting at something here. Action is the trump card that wins every time. <clears throat> and... Um, so moving into action will always get you someplace faster than someone else who's thinking you're just sitting studying the map. However, that's not what this magic magic bullet is. Magic bullet is even different from that. Michael says, uh, is ne effective networking. And Jay also says networking. Uh, you guys are right in terms of it, that being really important to a job search and to get it done quickly. But it was not the case. The uh, the control group and the program group, they all got the same uh, abilities and encouragement to network, et cetera. So network does work, but it's not a magic bullet. It's something that takes a lot of effort. Anybody else think of anything else? Greg says, those would have been my top guesses. Okay, Greg. Let's see if there's anyone else. Anyone else want to give a venture, give a little thought? All right, here comes. Drum roll, please. It is not networking, not job search work teams, although we, we 
approve of those and support people that work in search teams. It's not your LinkedIn profile or a better resume or a mass mailing. It's not using social media, none of those things. It has to do with, see that iceberg with 90% of it below the surface and 10% above? It is the power of the subconscious. So there's a technique to unleash the power of the subconscious. And unlike the more conscious, effortful job search techniques, this is nearly effortless. Um, you know, networking takes uh, getting up, dressed in your suit, get your business cards, get out there, you know, comb your hair, uh, schmooze. For some time. I've seen people walk away with more business cards. It's very labor intensive. And do we have to do it? I'm not saying we don't have to do it. All these things that were, but it's not a magic bullet. When I think of a magic bullet. I think of something like you fire it and it kind of works all by itself. And that's what uh, that's what this is. It's it's visualization, guided imagery, enrolling the subconscious. You see it in places like remember the movie Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. And currently, there's books on the market that all kind of in this pattern. The classic book, of Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, who says that all the things that you think of and, want and desire, if they're strong in your head, they will eventually produce themselves in outward reality. So his positive mental attitude and uh, moved through all kinds of literature. And I think it was written in the 30s, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, and it's a classic today. If you haven't read it, you should read it. They can grow rich. You can find it. The, the copyright's expired, so you can find it for free almost. Download it on, on the internet. Today there's a book called The Secret. Look at it carefully. You see it's the same thing. Laws of Attraction. These are popular versions of things that um, popular, excuse me, I had a phone I have to turn off here. Okay. Those are popularizations. So let's dig in see what we mean. I'm going to give you four or five exercises um, that, uh, that get at the heart of this unleashing the subconscious. So I'm going to, I want you to take a good look at what's in front of you on the screen. And I'm going to have you do a poll here. Look at it carefully, everybody. Now it's going to disappear because I'm going to launch this poll. So you were looking at how many of you saw, you just vote for these, how many of you saw the Federal Express logo? Okay, if you did, click, click that. How many of you saw an arrow? If you did, click that. If you saw both an arrow and the FedEx logo, choose that one. Oops, if you were asleep. <laughs> All right, so you'll be interesting to know, uh, this is interesting, that, uh, let me close the poll, that 50% of the people that were on the call saw just the FedEx logo. Another 50% 50 saw a logo and an arrow. So let's look really carefully. All those of you who didn't see an arrow a little while ago, take a look at the logo again and tell me if you can see the arrow. And I gotta put, open the questions box here. <clears throat> take a good look. If you want some help, I'm gonna help you here. Ready? One, two, three, help. Boom. Now do you see where the arrow is? You have the FedEx logo, and inside the FedEx logo is an arrow. But you don't see the arrow right away. You kind of have to know what you're looking for and look look for it. So when we talk about enrolling the, uh -huh. Ross says, I cannot see the, not on that screen, Ralph, Ralph Hart. I don't see the slide. All right, hold it. There, there. Okay. I'm looking to get. Okay. Now, now are we on board there? Everybody can see the logo.
Okay, yes, people got it now. Okay, so now we're taking a look. Let me let me go back one. Um, when you when you look at the FedEx logo, here, here's the topic we're talking about. All right, just a moment. I said a moment ago. I said we're, you're going to learn a magic bullet, something that's kind of effortless that will do great things in your campaign. And I said it had to do with the subconscious and the unconscious parts of ourselves. And what I want to do is illustrate the interplay between conscious and subconscious. So the first place we looked was in this FedEx logo. And I said, who sees an arrow? And only half of you saw an arrow. See, here's the, whoa. only half of you saw the arrow. Oops. Uh, when I click on polls, it, um, uh, you should be looking at the FedEx logo, and uh, making it in blue helps it stand out. But you know, it really, you, even then, it wouldn't stand out if you if you weren't able to engage the power of your subconscious to know what what you're going after. So let's just take a minute for it. Exercise one, FedEx logo, is simple. The arrow is there, but you don't see it. Half of you don't see it. The other half do. Then the arrow is there, and with a little help, you do see it. Since you know what you're looking for, you do see it. And when you do see it, I have to tell you something interesting. From now on, whenever you drive around the streets of Chicago or Denver, wherever you are, and you see the FedEx logo, the first thing you're going to see now is the arrow. That's just kind of how it works. You, you, it's like, oh, look at it. There, it's in there. So it started... Five minutes ago, you couldn't even see the arrow, and now it's changed to where it's only the arrow that you see, or it's first thing you can see. So let's just uh, philosophically uh, address this for a moment. Then, with that experience of you couldn't see, you couldn't see it until you knew what you were looking for. What does that say about the power of our mind? And how does it relate to job search? There are no right or wrong answers to that. Um, I just want to hear what people have to say. What does it say about the power of our mind? And what's the point related to job work, job search? Type in the question box any answer to this. This is the best I can do with a live presentation, by the way, um, is to do this through the question mark. If I, if I unmute the phones, uh, there's too much feedback. I'm not getting any takers on this question, so I'm going to answer the question myself, and then we'll move to the next exercise. Ah. So, so what does it say about the power of the mind? For me, it says the power of the mind. We think that we see things. We go around the day. We think we see a car. We think we see a a ladder, we think we see a street, we think we see a fire hydrant, etc. <clears throat> but largely what we see is what we make up in our minds. We take a little bit of sensory data and then we make up what it looks like. That's how why uh, that's why eyewitnesses are often not reliable because what they remember is what their brain cooked up, not what they was actually out there. And there's a, a book uh, from a guy called uh, a book called Crashing Through from a guy who at age three lost his eyesight and the acid burn. And later in his life, he, 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 he holds the record in downhill skiing for blind. He's totally blind. He sees a few shadows. But he, uh, uh, he, got, he got an operation to stem cells, restored some of his sight. He was able to receive a lot more sensory data, but he couldn't distinguish anything. He couldn't see a car, couldn't see a rabbit, couldn't see a blade of grass. He noticed the colors. So uh, we often see what we want to see. So if our subconscious is not programmed to, to go after what we want, to visualize what we want, you may end up someplace else. All right. Now let's do number two. This is going to be a, another piece of your imagination. And um, so I'd like you to close your eyes. 
and imagine you're holding a lemon, a nice yellow lemon. And take it up to your nose. You can smell the rind and the lemon a little bit. And in our imagination, we're going to cut a slice open. So in your imagination, take that lemon, cut it in half, and cut it in half again. And take it and bring it up to your nose and smell it. And as soon as you're ready, take a bite into that lemon. Pretty simple, all right? So, uh, so tell me what happened. Did anyone, you have, you'll have to respond to me in the question box. Did anyone have the experience of biting into a lemon just from your imagination. Ralph says, yes, I'm salivating. That's one. Who else? <laughs> Michael says, yes, it squirted me. And Greg says, yes, and puckering. Right? So you not only got that, that taste. And Ross says, yes. The bitterness is in the back of my mouth, yes. And Barry says, yes, very, very bitter. So that's exercise number two. The arrow is there. The first exercise of the arrow is there. You didn't see it until your intention grew strong. When your intention grew strong, not only was the arrow there, but you always see it. Now, this is kind of something different. This time, something is not there and you experience it. See, before we had something there and you didn't experience it, now we have something not there and you experienced it. The lemon is not there and yet you tasted it. The mind sometimes can't tell the difference between what you're making up and what's really out there. So what does it say about the power of our mind, points related to job search? I'm going to skip that question because last time I did it, nobody answered it, and they're all answered about slide uh, 20 slides from now. So I'm just going to leave you with this question. Think for a moment what that says about the power of your mind. And how do you think that relates to job search? If, if you, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll leave it to there. All right, another second to last uh, exercise here. Now, this is going to be a little bit difficult for you who are, aren't hands-free um, because I'm going to have you imagine yourself driving in a car on a four-lane highway. And you're in the left lane. As you can see that little kind of image of a car arrow there. You're in the left lane, and I want you to cross into the right lane in your imagination. So uh, if you have to put, the, put a microphone or a telephone down, uh, go ahead. Let's see if you can get in a place where your hands are free and you can close your eyes and uh, we'll do this little experiment. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I want you to imagine that you're driving a car and close your eyes and put your hands on the steering wheel at 10 and 2, you know, or however you you drive. And I'd like you to, to successfully drive from the left-hand lane and switch over to the right-hand lane. And I'm going to give you some instructions. Just kind of follow it and do whatever you think you, it takes to perform that successfully. So you're driving along. Do any kind of signaling or looking over your shoulder or whatever preparation you need to do. And when it's clear, turn the steering wheel and complete the change into the right-hand lane. OK, now that's not hard to do, right? And yet, I have a little surprise for you. More than likely, you did not do it correctly. So. How many of you went like this? 
you took the uh, you, you got ready to make the move. You turned the steering wheel so the car drifted over to the right hand lane. Then you brought the steering wheel back to center. Now most people that's what they do. But if you do that, you're going to end up in a ditch. I'll show you what I mean. There you go. You turn the steering wheel. And the steering wheel gets the car to turn a little bit to the right and head to that, that lane. And if all you do here is straighten it out, just come back to dead center, you're going to keep going the way you've been going, and you're going to crash. Because actually what you need to do is start here, turn the steering wheel to the right, change lanes, and turn, turn the steering wheel, steering wheel not just center, but further over. Turn to the right so the car straightens out again, and then back to center. So most of, you didn't do, most of you didn't do that. When I took this test, I didn't do it. I thought you'd just move to the right and move it back to center. But if you think about it, you'll see you're headed in the wrong direction. If all you do is center it, you're going to keep going in that wrong direction. You'll be in the ditch in the side of the road. Hmm. So let's see what we got here. Your conscious mind does not know how to drive a car. Your conscious mind is not a, how you drove there in your imagination, your conscious, using conscious effort to drive your imaginary car. What you drove there, or what you experienced there, says something about the power of your mind. And the points related to job search. Think about it. Anybody have any thoughts? Ralph writes, I'm in the ditch. Your conscious mind does not know how to drive a car. If you, if you did what the conscious mind said, you'd be over in the ditch and dead. Instead, it's the subconscious, the unconscious, the programmed part of us that gets that makes it happen. It makes it happen effortlessly, too. The next time you, you drive, do it consciously. And know, you'll notice that you'll turn right, then you'll turn left, past center, and then come back right again. What does it say about the power of our mind? It says we can do things we don't even know that we can do. All right, two more exercises. And then we will actually do what, uh, we'll actually do what the Job Hunters Magic Bullet proclaims we're going to do. So here's Fido. And uh, one of the little, the great dog, uh, I don't know particularly really his name, but if you can see it's a, it's a golden lab, is it? And a nice friendly dog. That's one thing. Now here's something else. What is this? Well, this is a microscope's vision of a virus, and specifically a rabies virus. So I'm going to talk to you about this. We were talking about the unconscious, the subconscious, the power of that uh, to direct our lives and get us what we want. And doing it on automatic pilot without having to put a lot of effort and energy into it, just allowing the mind to know where it wants to go and, and let it find its own path. So I'm going to show you how only a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of, uh, of stimulus will get all the response you need in terms of your in terms of, of your your, uh, your job search. Now, let's see, what is a virus? Is a vi which is bigger, a cell or a virus? Answer, a virus. Oops, sorry, a cell. Which is bigger, a bacteria or a virus? Answer, bacteria. Viruses are about <laughs> just about the smallest thing you can, you can imagine in the world. It's, it, it is not even a complete, it's just a string of DNA floating around. Right. And yet, that DNA has this transformation. You start with a dog, and the, the, or some someone with rabies. The virus is transmitted by the by the bite. Oh, 
you know what? I'm going to read it to you. I forgot. Influences in our cognitive life include tiny non-human non -human creatures. Microorganisms such as viruses and bacteria hold sway over our behavior in specific ways, waging invisible battles inside us. And this is from a book uh, about willpower and uh, what it takes to get the willpower to get up and do what has to be done. So he's talking about his favorite example and he says, Here's my favorite example of a microscopically small organism taking over the behavior of a giant machine, the rabies virus. After a bite from one mammal to another, this tiny bullet-shaped virus climbs its way up the nerves and into the temporal lobe of the brain. And there, it ingratiates itself into the local neurons. And by changing the local patterns of activity, it induces the infected host to aggression, rage, and a propensity to bite. The virus also moves into the salivary glands, and in this way it is passed on through the bite to the next host. By steering the behavior of the animal, the virus ensures it spreads to other hosts. So think about that for a minute. The virus, a mere 75 billionth of a meter in diameter, survives by commandeering the massive body of an animal 25 million times larger than it. It would be like you finding a creature 28,000 miles tall and doing something very clever to bend its will to yours and make it obey you. The critical take home lesson is that invisibly small changes on the inside of the brain can cause massive changes to our behavior. Our choices are inseparably married to the tiniest details of our machinery. Interesting, huh? Let's see if we can see what Fido looks like once you give him a little rabies virus. So let's take a look. We started by noticing that there was no arrow, and suddenly the arrow came there when you had the clarity and the intention to see it, then it showed up outside. It was there all the time, but you only saw it when your mind was ready to see it. Then the lemon. Something is not there, but it still guides your, your actions and behavior. And your conscious mind is so wrapped up in things that it doesn't even know how to drive it. It lets the subconscious do it. Then 25,000, 25 million times, something 25 million times smaller than us can actually rule and take over our body or a dog's body. So if one more experiment. I hope these things are helping you. They're kind of fun. I, I decided it's a little bit more fun in purpose, uh, in, in person actually, than doing it over the web, but it works over the web. Um, the, re the reason I want to do those little exercises is that I want to show you that in everyday life, there's hundreds of exercises we can do to show how the subconscious mind, the programmed mind, takes over the uh, the conscious mind. And here's here's my, actually this one is really my favorite. If you don't have yet, you should get a, um, a shoelace um, a, uh, or a piece, a piece, ideally a piece of thread, a couple of feet long. And if failing that, you can try dental floss. And failing dental floss, you can try shoelace or something like that. It won't work with a rope, but it'll work. Here's the exercise. I want you to take this string and thread it through the paper clip. Kind of like you were threading a needle. A little comment from Ralph who says there's sometimes when he comes home from work and gets home and can't remember the trip. Yeah. Our conscious minds can be wrapped up in things we let the unconscious mind rule. Okay, uh, just to let me know if you're ready, just say something in the question box like I'm ready or time to go or all set or let's, let's go Jack, something like that. Okay, Michael's ready, Ross is ready. We have uh, 14 people on the line. Let's see what we've got here. Ralph is ready, okay. 
Greg, you ready? That's great. Your fishing line. That's good. That's good. I like that. Anyone else want to tell me they're ready? Because I'm going to start now. Okay, here's what I would like you to do. I'd like you to experience, if you can, some will be successful, maybe some won't. I'd like you to experience the the uh, moving of the paperclip just using your mind. First, let's start by deliberately moving it. Clemens, thank you. You're ready. And hold it between your thumb and forefinger. Hold the string between your thumb and forefingers, right about the right about the level of the, of your neck, and uh, deliberately just swing that around. And notice what it means when your conscious self swings that around. Okay. Now, grab onto the paper clip and grab onto the string and get them all steady so that they're not moving at all. And just hold it. And what I'd like you to do is to concentrate your mental energy into making the paper clip go like a grandfather clock, tick tock, left to right, left to right, ever so little or ever so much, as much as you learn to be. It's just with the power of your mind now, not using anything else except your thought power. Make it swing that way. And now, with your mind only, make it swing the other way, back and forth, toward you and away. Back and forth, back and forth. This is toward, away, toward you, away. Just using the power of your mind. And again, with the power of your mind and concentration, concentrate on the, look at the paper clip and only the paper clip and see if it will go around in a clockwise motion, clockwise circle, round and around. However big, however small, your mind wants to do it. And now, see if it will reverse directions. Just use the power of your intention, the power of your mind, the power of your consciousness to move, not, not with your hands, to move it so it's going counterclockwise, around and around, ever so little or ever so much. That's right. And now I'd like you to entertain a negative thought. This is stupid. This can't happen. I, people can't move by itself. There must be some trick to this. What's going on? There? Okay. So, uh, this is going to take a little bit of time because your entries will be bigger than more than just one sentence. But uh, type me some things about what we, what we, what your experience was. Anyone can vote into the question box here. So, what happened to you? It takes a little while for the questions to come in. Let's take three or four people sharing their experience. So Ralph says, well, it worked. So that's the amazing thing right there, is that, is that holding it still in your hands, your mind was still able to move it uh, with, its, with its thought power. Thanks, Ralph. Who else had an experience? Tell us what happened. So Michael says, by the time we got to the counterclockwise, it was moving around, okay? And Ross says, yes, I could make it do as I wanted. Obviously, I envisioned what I wanted, and my hand did the work. Yes, it is true. Your hand did the work, but you don't experience your hand doing the work. You experience that it just kind of gets done. <laughs> well, Ross says, while trying to hold it steady, the paper clip moved in, in the direction my mind wanted to move. So even when without the kind of hypnotic ex instructions, you notice the power of your intention got it to do exactly what you wanted to do. Ross says correct. So uh, one other thing, what happened? And uh, Ralph says <clears throat> it worked using both hands. Oh, I never tried it. Left handed. Any other comments? Good work, you guys. Good work. 
let's just get one more comment about what about when you entertained a negative thought? You were kind of moving maybe a little or a lot or whatever, and then you had that negative thought. What happened to uh, paper clips there? Ross says his slowed way down. Okay. Michael says it moved anyway, but I wasn't controlling it. So it you kind of lost the connection there between those two things because your subconscious and conscious weren't really aligned with each other. And Sylvia stopped dead in his tracks. That's usually the answer people give. That's uh that when they say oh, this can't be happening, sure enough, it stops happening. So let's do a little summary and see where we can go from there. All right? Enough of the experiments. We're going to actually show show you how to talk to your subconscious in a moment, and uh, and we'll, yeah, we're going to do that. All right. So the point of these exercises. What's the point of these exercises? On the left hand side, here's the power of the guiding image and what it means for a job search on the right hand side. So the FedEx logo, the arrow was there, you didn't see it. Now you always see it. In the job search, you must know what you're looking for and <clears throat> allow and encourage your subconscious to uh, find it. The lemon is not there, but you still taste it. That talks to how deeply the subconscious works. If you want something to be working in your job search, it has to have power. It has to come from you know, power that you almost like just make up passion. So you want to make it as real as possible inside yourself with your passion. That will help find it outside yourself. Your conscious mind can't drive your car. The, the lesson here is trust and empower your subconscious to avoid the ditch the career ditch, I guess. Something two million times smaller can rule. Even a tiny change in your subconscious search can rule. So you don't have to, this is not a whole core dump and restructuring and brainwashing you need. All you need to do is a few tweaks, and we'll show you how to do them in a moment. The mind moves the paper clip in job search and points to the fact that a conscious mind can train the subconscious mind. So let's do it. Summary, the power of the subconscious mind, right, there's a message from Rel. Okay. Um, thanks. Can you keep sharing with me, guys, here, because it's, it's kind of voice to, voice to text uh, conversion, but I do want to be in communication as much as possible. So the summary is, the power of the subconscious to see possibilities, to influence our actions, to get results in our lives, clear out limited thinking, supply motivation, a thousand times more powerful than our conscious mind. The subconscious mind can be trained by the conscious mind. It can be programmed. But you're asking then, great, how do, I, how do we communicate with the subconscious? How do we communicate with the subconscious? Visualizations. In a study that uh, that the PhD um, the PhD doctoral study that we, we quoted the employment statistics at the beginning of the webinar, in that uh, experiment, the the control group just went about the ways they usually did. They had a second group. They got used visualization techniques. Then there was a third group they had that were just told to meditate. And the change didn't happen for those who meditated. The change only happened for those who had visualizations and were actually talking and forming their, their subconscious minds. So that's what it is. I'm going to demonstrate one with you shortly uh, and show you how to, how to integrate it into your job search. So. When we talk about it being programmed, notice down here it says there's two programming focuses. There's things we want to do with the past and things having to do with the future. In the past, they, um, in the past, 
to understand why you do a visualization and go back and change some of your memories of the past or reenact or work on them it has to do with uh, something from a lady named Elizabeth Kubler Ross who says anytime there's a loss in our lives, especially a, a death, but any any loss, you go through the stages of, oh, it can't be true, and then you get mad, and then it's like, well, God, if you give me this, I promise I'll never do that again, and depression. So you have to go through denial, anger, bargaining, depression, before you can get to acceptance. And think for a minute, who gets hired? People who are in kind of la-la land and denying what's uh, what's there. They get no. Do angry people get hired? No. Bargaining to depress people? Do they get hired? No. The people who get hired are the people who in their lives have got to the acceptance phase and aren't being dragged back by anger and upset from times gone by. So uh, the Job Loss Recovery Program by Lynn Joseph, Lynn is a doctoral student that, that did that. Uh, they have a way to talk to your subconscious. There's the Job Loss Recovery Program. You can get it in bookstores, I believe. Uh, the book is 15 bucks, and the CDs are 24, and the CDs specifically focus on going back into some traumatic times or angry times or upset times or when you were fired or lost money or whatever. And uh, as you kind of clean those up in your, in your memory, work helps you work through those stages. So what's the dosage of visualizations? How much do we visualize all the time? Or do you, about this much. The emotional healing, that's going into the past, she did it, she, her, her study did it six days in a row. It's about a 25 minute visualization. And that helped people get past the anger and upset and denial, et cetera, from uh, the factory closing. The other visualizations, and let me see if I got them here. Yeah, the other visualizations, like here's some visualizations I'll give you a, a deal on at the end of the, today's meeting. Um, these are focused on focusing for the. These are focused on your job search for the future. Results for the day, as you in the morning imagine what kind of results you want to get by evening. The ideal day ahead is a morning meditation that uh, has you go through an ideal day before your day actually starts. Visit your wise inner teacher gets you into answering questions that are perplexing by, by allowing your subconscious to work on them. And an ideal day in the career future, we're going to do that here. in a moment. Just a moment going after There we go. There we go. I was looking for the recording. Sorry for the time wasted. So here's what we're gonna do. We have um, it's quarter to eleven this visualization will take us to 11 o'clock central time and then we have about five a little over five minutes or so for me to integrate this into your into your, um, uh, your job search tools so here's a sample 12 minute visualization and I'd, I'd like you to uh, to do this along with me uh, if you have a speakerphone that would be an ideal thing to do put the speakerphone on at this point if you have headphones, put those on. If you have to, um, if you have to hold the receiver uh, of, the, of your phone, uh, it'll take a little bit of the concentration away. But you can you can do it. So we're going to take 12 minutes, and I'll show you what a visualization is like. Many of you have. It's not really complicated. And as a matter of fact, you already did one earlier today when we bit into the lemon. It was a visualization. So, but I just want to be clear. So this one is. Uh, is on the ideal career day. So you need to be sitting in a room, sitting upright in a chair. This is the ideal career position, lucrative careers focus exercise, suggested for an evening focus. Sit comfortably with your feet flat on the floor, hands resting lightly on your thighs, and your back resting straight in your seat, and close your eyes and take a deep breath and relax. Take another deep breath and be begin to focus on your breathing. As you inhale, allow the air to go deep 
deep down to the space of your spine, feeling the gentle flow of air as it moves down your spine, then slowly exhale and feel the cells of your body beginning to relax. As you enjoy the sensation of your own breathing, inhale deeply again and draw your breath deep down to the base of your spine. Then slowly exhale. Feel the cells of your body beginning to relax. And as you exhale, feel the energy of your breathing and relax you even deeper. Continue breathing easily and slowly, feeling yourself resting gently in your seat. Fill the gentle air with your body with restfulness. And now, begin to focus. Focus on a point one inch above your head. Imagine there's a ball of white light floating there bathing your body in healing energy. Allow your concentration to increase and gently guide the ball of white light so that it is one inch in front of your forehead, then down in front of your throat, your chest, your stomach, your thighs, your legs, and then your feet. Still relaxed, move the ball of white light back up in front of your legs, your thighs, your stomach, your chest, your throat, your forehead, and the top of your head, allowing your concentration to increase. You experience yourself in the center of this ball of white light. It is as if you are surrounded by a bubble of white light. Begin to tense the muscles in your feet and legs. Tense, 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 and relax. Now sense the muscles in your thighs and stomach. Tense, 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 and now quickly relax. Now tense the muscles in your chest and back. Tense. Tense, tense, and relax. Lastly, tense the muscles in your neck and face. Make a face. Tense, 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 and relax. Feel yourself deeply relaxed. And now, when you are fully relaxed, every cell in your body is relaxed and filled with white healing light you will begin the visualization of an ideal career day sometime in the future. Imagine yourself starting an ideal work day sometime from now. Imagine waking up exactly as you would like to begin your day. Imagine yourself preparing for the day full of anticipation for what you will do and looking forward to it. And now imagine you are traveling to work in exactly the mode you wish to be, wherever you choose as you travel. A long way away, several places, working from home. Imagine entering your space of work or one of your spaces of work. Notice how this space is inviting and it's welcoming you. 
Notice the sounds and smells. Notice anyone who greets you and may be with you today. Now continue your through continue through your day, imagining it fully in its ideal form. You may notice or not the projects you engage in. Experience yourself fully competent, confident, challenged, and completely involved in your work. Take all the time you need, three minutes of clock time, to experience these parts of your ideal day. You may get several screens. It may be clear, it may be fuzzy. Those themes will appear and disappear with their own logic. Take all the time you need, a good two and a half minutes of clock time, and imagine more scenes from the, today's workday, the imaginary workday. That's right. Experience your day, the people you interact with, the challenges you face. All the time you need, a full two minutes of clock time. All the time you need, a full minute and a half of clock time. Allow any feelings of delight or joy or accomplishment. They're welcome. Continue to experience your day all the time you need, a solid minute of clock time. That's right, but the last few seconds, move yourself to the end of the day. And take a moment to look back fondly on your day and the pleasure of the day's work. You may thank yourself and thank all those who helped you along the way so you could experience this ideal future day. Notice, as it is possible, some of the risks and challenges you had to face to get from here to your ideal day. Notice people you formed relationships with, people you haven't met yet but are soon to be part of your life. What kind of preparation, training, fun or not so fun obstacles did you overcome? Notice any that comes to mind. And now you continue your relaxed state, speaking to the mind that cares for you in ways you are not even aware of, guiding you on your journey to the ideal day. And when you're ready, say to yourself, I choose to have this ideal career day. I choose to have it and more effortlessly, joyfully, and fully. I choose to have this ideal career day. I choose to have it and more, effortlessly, joyfully, and fully. I choose to have this ideal career. 
I choose to have it and more effortlessly, joyfully, and fully. Take a deep breath, and when you're ready, return to normal consciousness. You come back relaxed, ready to move back into your conscious self, eager for the next steps in your life. Uh, so that's an example of, uh, I'm going to ask you if you, can, you guys can stay past 11 to about uh, 11.05, 11.10 at the latest. Um, I'd like to get some feedback. How did you, uh, how did you go? How did it go for you? Did you notice anything you want to share? Just type it in the question box. This one we were talking about, re about doing the future. I think that the typing a question and answer is not going to be efficient enough. Uh, I'm going to have to find a way to get uh, get it so we can all be live. Not not today, but get it so we can all be live, or at least 10 or 15 of us. Um, so that's an example of programming your mind for the future, and that's how you talk to your subconscious, by the way. You can't just ram stuff down his throat. It has to be quiet, relaxed. The body needs to be relaxed. and. Um, on that special meditation where the people at the factory went back and redid their scenes of being hired, it took this these steps in the visualization. <clears throat> so I think I've done it. I mean, you go here. We go. Ralph says, "In my in my ideal day, I felt blessed by God and blessed by others." Yes. Barry says, saw myself working in the company I would like to work for and could see the logo. All right. So these are all the things that uh, that we said we do, and we've done them all. Now let's do this. Um, I want to get you the capability to talk to your unconscious and move your careers along dramatically. Uh, one thing also I want to do is get everybody, anybody who can bend over backwards to get them to get a copy of my salary negotiations book. It's what we work for, and uh, wouldn't want you to not have it. So, book regularly 15, 16 bucks. I have a, a ideal day visualization, future ideal career career position. That's the one we just did. Asking your inner teacher, getting results, and then. Uh, I have a version of the going back and healing the past, emotional closure too. So regularly that would add up to 65, 95. But uh, today in this call, it's a ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous $15. And here's how you get it. Go to uh, www.tinyurl.com slash magic bullet bundle. Within an hour after the workshop, you're going to be receiving an email, and uh, that code is in the email. The important thing is that you know your coupon. The coupon is BULLET, B-U-L-L-E-T. If you don't do that, it'll want to charge you $65. So, okay, and BULLET, and you will get a <clears throat> discount down to $15. Um, so, actually, we're ending up pretty much on time. Um, let me get a couple of comments from here. Ralph says, I think I need to work on healing from my last job. Yes. If there's anything back there about, you know, not liking how you were fired, blaming yourself for losing it or being mad at the, some other nationality for undercutting our price and putting you out of business or whatever, any of those things, as bag as you carry into an interview. And people tell me, oh, I would not, never talk to an interviewer like that. Or I would. It doesn't matter. You can see, as long as it's in your belief system, it's going to poke out somewhere. So going back and getting to the level of acceptance on those is really important. Um, you can do that. Either get Lynn Joseph's book. She has a CD and a, uh, and a book. Or you can get my CD and book uh, in the book bundle. Uh, and let's see, 
Someone says in my ideal work, that was five years ago. Clement says, in my ideal I woke up happy, eager to start the day, smiling throughout the whole day, throughout my interactions. Yes, you know, uh, thank you for sharing that. When you have these images, you're beginning to program your mind. You, you can't just put a little slot in there and say, boop, we're done. You, you have to be patient and work with the pictures. I think of it as kind of like if you had, if you had a glass of Coca-Cola, it would look like dark black, and you wanted to replace it with something healthier, the, the golden uh, of apple juice. Well, you don't start with an empty glass, you start with a full glass of Coke, and you take the apple sauce, apple, uh, uh, apple juice, and pour it in, and now you have a little bit more, now you have 50-50. And the the color begins to change. Each time you put something in, it flushes other things out and until you finally, after the tenth or so uh, glassful, you'd probably have 99% um, apple juice and 1% uh, Coke. So it's the same with our minds here. Our minds are already full of all kinds of thoughts. You need to pour in new thoughts, and when you get pour in new thoughts, your subconscious will start sorting them around and seeing which ones are important or not. But that's how it's done, and the people who do that, advanced people, Thoreau's quote says, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he's imagined, he will meet with success unexpected in common hours. So thank you. Uh, is the book on audio? No. Uh, thank you all very much. I will, if you want to write down that um, URL, you're welcome to do it. And uh, I wish you the best in all of your careers. If you'd like to, we have uh, 13 people online. If you would just say what you appreciate or what you learned that you appreciate learning today. So Ross says, thanks for the insight. OK, you're welcome, Ross. I hope it shows up in your job search. Anyone else want to sign out here, please? Greg says, thank you. You're welcome, Greg. I appreciate you being here. If anything I can do, help, I'll help you. Uh, Barry says, very powerful. Thanks for the help. It is very powerful, Barry. It's not scary powerful. It's good powerful. As Clemens says, thank you. You are very welcome. And Michael says, thanks. I can see how practice over time will make a difference. Yes, and uh, Michael, I think we're, we have an appointment at some time, so make sure you get the closure visualization. That would be important. And uh, Kelly, I plan to do the visualizations each night before bed. Thank you. That's, that's great. Ralph says, thanks for the reminder about active med meditation. Yes. You're welcome all. Have a wonderful day.